be engaging in the process of how do we do this. And so when we got the letter, when the letter came, it, it really was a, a, a shocker because it just didn't reflect accurately any of the conversations that we really have been having and the understanding and the good faith that we were working with. And so I think we can maybe uh, get past that and, and probably get to a more positive uh, note rather than what was uh, it communicated in the letter, which kind of said, uh, hey. <laughs> you tell me that. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, it, that was rough. That was rough. So, uh, well, well, I mean, I, I think those who sent the letter would be more qualified to speak to, you know, what it said and what the intent was than I am, you know. Um, so, uh, I would like to turn it over and uh, let the superintendent uh, begin to speak to what you have experienced and where you see uh, how we facilitate a positive outcome here in this space. Thank you. Thank you, Mike King, and uh, thank you all of you for the wonderful presentation tonight. You know, I've had a few conversations, a couple conversations with Mike King about the future of man a building, man school. Um, I think we, we all agree that we're all about children. You know, I think that you made it clear that it's a community here in support of children uh, in many different ways, whether it's academics or just even the self-esteem, self-image, uh, you know, support that they're getting uh, to, to be confident as they move out of the world. Uh, I don't know if everyone here under, understands our side in terms of the issue that the, the barriers that we have. In terms no, of we don't work. understand at all. No, okay. no, no, no. So, this building has been a part of a major plan. It's part of a, a complete uh, sequence of events, se a sequence of uh, facilities that we've put on to a plan that developed before even my arrival to do Seattle okay. Public Schools. And that is that this building, um, the intention was that this building would be uh, remodeled and put back into service as a, as a public school. The reason for that is that Seattle Public Schools has experienced a uh, tremendous increase in enrollment over the last few years. Just last year alone, 1,400 students, the year before that, 1,000, the year before that, 1,000, and we're expecting to grow by 1,500 students this year. So we have to have capacity, we have to have a place to put our, ch our children. There are children. How many are colors? How many are colors? One of the reasons that this is a real important uh, part of that overall construction program is that we have Washington Middle School that serves students in the area that is now up to 1,200, 1200 students, uh, and it keeps growing. And there's no way that we can accommodate that just by moving boundaries. That's not gonna, that's not going to suffice in terms of uh, creating relief. We're bringing in more relocatables to Washington this year. There are a total of 14 uh, portable classrooms that have been added to, to Washington, which creates a lot of stress on the buildings, on the facilities. It, it limits the green space that students have to be able to do other things. So the reason that this building is important to the construction and to the capacity management is it's going to help unload um, Washington Middle School. We're still going to have issues even after we unload it because we've still got to continue to look at building capacity. The intention right now is that NOVA would come over here in order to have uh, MINI uh, uh, reopen as a middle school. So we need to relocate that program. The intention was to relocate that program here. So therein lies the challenge for us is that we need the building to accommodate students. You've made a very good case for uh, having a facility. You prefer this facility. I understand that. You've been in here for the last, I don't know, what is it, year and a half, Point King? Two years? Year and a half. Year, year and a half. Year and a half. Year and a half. And you've been you, you, during that time. You've managed to build a really good uh, community center for for this part of, the, of our of our city. So we agree that that the, that the services that you have are valuable and that they serve a purpose. I think that what we could do today is talk about how we can meet the needs of the of the Seattle Public Schools and really the needs of children and meet the needs of the community groups that are here to serve. And I think that's what the intention for today was, uh, to say, uh, I know when I talked to White King uh, briefly earlier today, uh, he mentioned, is there any possibilities for 
school happen? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, is it here or do we? Right, right. You can go to Garfield High right. School. Where we have, I mean, we have to have, I mean, are we at me? I mean, we have to have. Well, and, and I think that not, that's, it's not just community groups, it's actually right. students it and children right. of the district. Right. 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 Yeah, that's yeah. And, right. and, and so, so part of what our conversation, very briefly, was are, are there opportunities for cohabiting, whether it's here? with NOVA and some of the support services, or whether that's in another facility, uh, continuing to provide uh, support for the groups that are here. So I think that's what, what we're intending to do today, is really outline um, what are some potential options for maintaining services, hopefully in this area, this immediate area, because it seems to be where uh, I heard earlier students are able to walk to the programs that come from the neighborhoods, and this is where we have a high need of uh, support for students. And so we're here to provide some options as well to say, you know, we're open to ideas. How can we accommodate the needs of Seattle Public Schools, the needs of children here, and, and also accommodate the needs of the community groups in terms of serving, providing service for uh, community groups and children. So um, I think part of the intention today was for us to put up some ideas. If it's cohabiting, what does that look like, whether it's here, whether it's another facility, whether it's other programs that maybe we can relocate to be able to serve the needs. I think one of the questions was, just, I'm sorry, one of the questions was this building, this site, is big enough to facilitate more than just one program, NOVA, which is a citywide program, meaning that the students commute to that program and they can drive anywhere. So if there's any space in the city that the district has a building, they can drive there. That's right. And you can't relocate a community-based program for the Central District to West Seattle. Or, you know, and so I just want to ask if we could hold maybe the, the, the claps and, the, and, and no shouting down because we do want to get to the meat of the issues here, which is, you know, our children were not account accounted for and our community was not accounted for when the district decided that, well, we need another building to move some kids from here or to there or X, Y, Z. So, you know, that revisiting that plan that had blind spots in it is what the community has offered the opportunity to do. Um, and so I think that is really the frame we wanted. I mean, we met, you know, two months ago, and we kind of put these same issues on the table. So we were hoping that the district uh, would go back and we thought the commitment was that they would go back and really dig in to what buildings do we have, what would co-location look like, how do we build this building out that it facilitates, you know, a school program in the daytime and community activation like some other, other successful models around the country. That's what we were hoping to hear back today, that we're really looking at some options, you know. Um, 